Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe. So grab your seat, your coffee or your sundowner. Okay, everybody, here we go. On point, as always, this is Gloves Off. Gloves Off. Back at you and gloves off. I'm Professor Buitron, and I'm here with one of Laredo's own and finest pugilist, a women pugilist, Mandy. How are we doing, Mandy? You doing good? Hello, good morning. Doing good. <laughs> you know, it's always a pleasure to see you because you always have a smile. You always have this positive energy, and uh, you are very much one of the boxers of Laredo. You are. Your name's on that list where everybody fought in the ring. Okay? and you're loved by, by the community. But let's touch base. I know you have some good news. I know you're just, uh, you just have a nice uh, newborn. Yes. Uh, <laughs> how's, that, how's that feel? Mom being? life, mom life is incredible. Uh, although, you know, sleepless nights, but those sleepless nights are very worth it because I'm seeing my son grow. Uh, mom life is just the best for me right now. <laughs> Absolutely. But let's touch base. Um, do you miss the ring? Of course I do. Uh, there's never a day where I don't think about the adrenaline. There's a day. There's never a day that goes by where I don't think about you know having that urge to punch somebody. <laughs> it's just I don't know. It's I do miss it. Yes, very much. Uh, what would you say? Because boxing, and I tell this to a lot of people, boxing is where that's where you can truthfully say where it separates we used to say the men from the boys but also the women from the girls mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that want to do it but very few actually do it and those that actually start competing start fighting they end up becoming more by themselves mm -hmm. you go yeah they have friends they have this they have, you know but those are more acquaintances you know but the people that are in the ring actually become part of your family no, of course. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, what are those, uh, that energy that was there, um, I know you said you missed it, but what has it taught you in being in life? How, how would you, what would you say? It's, it's taught me so many things. Um, first and foremost, it's taught me to stand strong, to stay strong, and to be strong. Even though there's hits coming out of, coming from all from all sides and from the front and to you know, um, I've learned that that's how life is. Life can be very unexpected, uh, can hit you in so many ways, but you just gotta dodge them and just keep moving forward and just fight back, fight back for the positive. Uh, you know, uh, seek seek for victory, and that's how I that's how I feel, and that's how I feel when I'm in the ring and out the ring. No, you know, and and your your answer is one that is used by those that have been seasoned. And when I say seasoned, have been in the ring, have sparred, have sometimes tasted their own blood or somebody else's blood, sweat, and you're in there with. And sometimes you want to quit, but you don't quit. You keep on going forward. And I think that the not quitting comes from those that have actually fought in the ring. Yes, definitely. And uh, that is trans transmitted to everyday life. Mm -hmm. and, and in life, you know, in jobs and so on and so forth, you continue moving forward. Okay. What would you say about that? Uh, it's, a, it's the biggest, the great, one of the greatest comparisons, actually, because, you know, when you do get defeated, you don't stay down. You get up, you... You know, you keep moving forward and say, you know what, I got this. I'm gonna try again. That's what life is about, I believe. Uh, when life has its snows, you just gotta keep up, keep getting up, and find a find a way to reach that yes that's meant for you, as destiny. And uh, you, you know, you're you're absolutely correct, and and you're 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 correct because you know you see that in there, you know, the destiny that's in there, and. What I've seen, and 
and what I've seen those that have fought in the ring is you have a dependable individual. What do I mean by dependable? They're reliable. You know, a lot of people want courage and integrity and all this. No, 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 those are, those are parts of personality. Yeah. But I think the thing that the ring, the, that, that, that square circle teaches us is in those that stay in it, not just those that come to the gym. Yeah. Talking about those that are going to be there every day and they're going to go for, they're going to train for a bout and move forward. I think it's called dependability. And that dependability, you see them, you see them in work and you see them in everything in life. Yeah. Yes. And in life itself, it's commitment, you know, um, throughout, the, throughout the years of actually being in boxing and my career, uh, it was always commitment. I felt like it was a marriage. I felt like I, I, I was committed to do something. I had to stay and stick with it. I couldn't say, you know what, I have a fight coming up. You know what, I'll train tomorrow. Or, you know what, I will go ahead and say it for next week. No, because every, every minute counts as when you're in the ring and out the ring. And therefore, you know, you just got to keep moving forward from that. You know, and um, I know that with Eddie, your, your husband is also another yes. another boxer, another boxer from Laredo, and, and I know he feels the same way, and uh, congratulations for, for your baby, and I'll talk to Eddie next week, you, you know, and uh, I think uh, you've seen that drive that you have that I'm not going to fall down, even with with Eddie, yes. you know, and everything that's going on and his biggest battle right now, and uh, we'll, we'll come through it. Yes. And uh, But what would you tell folks that are looking for something and they want to go into boxing, what would you tell them first? What would you, how would you take, go about with that? Um, I would first tell them, you know, we're, we're met, we're here for a reason, and let that reason be worth it. Uh, follow whatever what's follow your heart as in follow whatever's destined what's whatever is made for you if you feel that something some certain thing is meant for you you just keep striving you just keep going don't stop there's gonna be of course bumpy roads there's gonna be bumps on the road but that doesn't mean for you to stop it just it just means for you to keep going because that's gonna strengthen you to reach for the victory Absolutely, absolutely. Um, how can you, how can you put it to this way? Would you ever go back in the ring, or do you, do you think, do you get those, those, uh, those ideas? Those ideas, those ideas, of course I do. <laughs> because now I have somebody, you know, I have, of course I've had my audience, I've had people that look up to me and that's, uh, and that sort which I'm very grateful because of them, you know, I'm, I, I am who I am because of them. They motivated me uh, to keep fighting forward, to keep pushing myself, you know, to where I was at. And uh, especially when they'll chat my name, that would, I would just finish strong. <laughs> uh, but now I have somebody very, very special that is going to look up to me and his dad which is my son so of course I would love to jump back so he could say you know what that's my mom that's that's my hero and he's actually my hero because because of him I am where I'm at today absolutely those are beautiful words and uh, well you know like everything else they're comebacks yes you yes. know and you know who it is and and we'll be with you in whichever form you decide if you decide to go in there or not but you know but there's a lot of things you can do in boxing there's they continue teaching others, you know, and yes. or help out as a referee for the amateur sides or even for the pro sides. And yes. So there's always something that's involved within within the ring that that you can do. You know. Yes, definitely. Even if it's just me, you know, being a a, a corner man, uh, that would that would be very very great for me because boxing itself, it's life. It's life to one in the ring and it's life to one out the ring because of the the lifestyle that one's always had and pretty much boxing is my lifestyle and it's my husband's lifestyle and soon's gonna be my son's lifestyle so yes i boxing's life absolutely you know um and i get get the same you know we, we teach and move and i came from a boxing family from one that did support and boxing and 
on my uncle's box and if they were they were in a combative sport one way or another and 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 so you you all, I know what it is to live in those in that family environment you know because it they would always push you you can't do this do it this way you know there was always a a type of let's meet head first something that Mm -hmm. Or you know what? Let's study it and move around it. But you're gonna find a way to tackle that problem, mm -hmm. and that is something that that the the sweet science has, has taught me is that no matter what's you no know, what problem is there, you can always find a solution. Yes, you, you can know? always find a way. And, and life itself, and life, and when life tries to you know test you, you give them the answer, and you find a way out and that's that's what I, I believe that's what I went through you know growing up in boxing especially the biggest test was the day I lost my dad and uh, the following day I had to fight and that was the biggest test for my career not just for my career again in the ring it's out the ring as well uh, it's taught me how to be stronger It molded me to be that bold strong fighter that I you know that I was taught to be in the ring aside from my trainers you know um, I would always hear my dad's voice as well so that's what drives me to be the fighter that I am and because of I, I believe because of that because of you know because of that day that incident you know I I strive to be the strongest fighter out there Absolutely, you know, and you know that's that's where the testing comes from. Yes. That's that, let me ask you this: out of all the fighters, the old, the new, and because we always kind of go back and look at who's your favorite. Who would you say? You know what? My favorite. Um, I have I have not so many favorites, but you know I have like a hand chosen of the ones that I. Pretty much there's some of old school and some of, you know, of today. Uh, first and foremost, Chavez. Sure. Chavez, his schooling, his, you know, because of him, because of, you know, studying him and watching his videos for every preparation of a fight, I started more my defense and as well as my offense as well. Uh, so Chavez is pretty much one of my, one of my first ones. And, the second one is is uh, Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto, most everybody says because he kind of resembles my husband. <laughs> All right, I'll take, I'll give it to him. But <laughs> uh, that for that certain reason, why I choose him is because uh, the the night my father's fight, uh, they compared me to him. A photographer had came up to me, and I still remember like it was yesterday. He's like, how many fights do you have? I was like, this is this will be my third one, professional. I was like, yeah. And he's like, how about amateur? I was like, well, I only have seven. Incredible. Are you serious? I was like, he was in disbelief. I was like, yeah. He's like, wow, because the way you were moving up there, the, you reminded me of Miguel Cotto, and boom. I was like, okay, Miguel Cotto's my, he's my all-time favorite for now. <laughs> but other than that, it's. Um, it's Miguel Chavez, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez and Miguel Cotto. You know, they're, and they're both excellent boxers, you know. And, uh, you know, Chavez uh, was phenomenal. Oh, of course. He's phenomenal. Especially with his and, head uh, You know, <laughs> and with his gancho, for, you know. And, and it's interesting because that gancho is from Laredo, Texas. A lot of people say, oh, no, it's not. Laredo, there used to be an old world champion by the name of Battling Shaw. He was a police officer. Mm -hmm. His bed, his bed is a, his first name um, escapes me right now. Mm -hmm. But the gancho he developed here. Okay, he developed the gancho here. He fought and he fought a guy by the name of Kid Azteca okay. back in, in the 50s. He was one of Mexico's greatest fighters. And he beat Kid Azteca the first time. Mm -hmm. Kid Azteca looked at the f videos of how he beat him and he learned the gancho out of the videos. Out of the old movies, you know, and the, yeah. how it was, and he came back and beat him later on, and and they took the gancho to Mexico. But the, the gancho, the way it is, the way it's thrown, yeah. it was taught here. Wow. You know, it might have come from over there, but the one that kind of signature made that signature was uh, the battling shot. Wow! And so a lot of people here 
knew the gancho because of him. Mm -hmm. So if you look at some of the old boxers like um, Dicky Marquez and and uh, Senor Rendon and and even Jimmy Sandoval, you know, and mm -hmm. and the ones that a after that stayed with my uncle when, when my uncle took over the stable after Pueblo Casillas, mm -hmm. they uh, they would have they all had that gancho that overwrite. Yeah. And that all rights also a signature from from this era. Oh, that's that, one of my favorite punches. That a lot of people don't know where it comes, yeah. but it's it, it was it's it was heavily given to us here. Yeah, wow. And um, that you know, and it's interesting. It's it's a beautiful history that we have of boxing. Or boxing, yeah. And, and, and I'm just putting it out there. I do envy my husband's left hook, which one day I'm gonna I'm gonna get him. Well, I did get him, but I'm gonna get him with that left hook. So yeah, I want to put it out there. <laughs> you know, and, and Eddie, Eddie was, Eddie was good. You know, Eddie's good. You know, and um, we have very talented boxers here. Yes. Not because he's your husband, but you know, he's t you're talented, and we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of talent here, but I think the seriousness divides many. Yeah, the commitment, the, the commitment, the discipline, the, the the want, the drive. You know that. You know, you have to be obsessed. Yeah. And. We have a couple now. We have a couple of like Jorge from from Castaneda, yes. Castaneda those guys. I mean, they're they're great athletes. I mean, we're we're going to produce some other world champions yes. in the very near future. You know, hoping so. Yes, definitely. And and seeing if there's any other female out there that's gonna you know that's gonna make me happier than anything because that that's something that I left behind. Maybe I'm not a world champion, but I planted a seed here yeah. in Laredo for that because since in the in pros you did you did a, a, absolutely and it's hard okay yes definitely because I remember in, in the 80s when you used to take I used to take a, a team and I had a couple of girls in in Dallas and one of them ended up winning state and, and golden gloves and got second in, in, in the country is that when you go up is you have Girls will be training five, six years, and they'll have two, three bouts, mm -hmm. four bouts, because yeah. there was nobody, no, no women fighting. Nobody's so, fight. yeah. so when you would meet a girl that had eight, nine, ten bouts, you knew that she had been training for a very, a very really long, long time. time. Yeah, and a lot of them would fight each other over and over and again. You yeah. know, just and to just, just to, to raise their, their, you know, their, their experience, their level. experience, and and to to raise their. The record, really. The record. There you, you know, go. So, so, and you would see that, you know, and and it's it's, and it's changed. Yeah. Kind of like in two thousand eight, it just went bloop, but it just had a whole different ball. Yeah. Well, that's why actually, in a way, um, I did nothing but smokers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I only had seven fights. I didn't even get a chance to, you know, to because I wanted to gain the experience of having the smokers first, of course, you know, especially uh, being trained by my trainer, uh, Felix Garcia. Um, he knew the way. He knew, you know, the 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 walk to, you know, gaining my experience to, you know, to hit that certain level. But so far, at that time, being because I was the only girl here, even as amateur, um, that's why I only have seven fights because nobody wanted to fight. There's no fighters for smokers. And that's why I didn't, you know, reach the upper levels of, of boxing, of like Golden Gloves. I didn't even get to go to Golden Gloves after my seventh fight. That's when my trainer said, you know what, what do you want to do? Uh, you ready? You want to... You know, in, in, 2000, in 2000 was when we came back and I took a team to the Golden Gloves. We had a young girl here by the name of Nancy Yendo. Okay. She fought one time in, in Pearsall. Okay. And we went to Rio Grande City, mm -hmm. fought another time, so she had two. Yeah. So she shows up in the Golden Gloves. They're all, they're all gonna go to the Golden Gloves. Yeah. Nobody shows up, and she ends up winning Golden Gloves, but bye bye. But she won the it tournament, is. you know. So at least that was a mark. But she had gotten some too. Then she got this. She got uh, discouraged. No one ever knew. No one said this, and they quit. And, yeah. I, and I said, you, you have to. You can't just quit. Yeah, no, of course not. That's something that, you know, boxing itself teaches you not to quit. Uh, there's going to be, you know, knockdowns and there's there's going to be, you know, takedowns that are that hurt. 
but that's where you know your strength is tested and that's where your mind is tested as well okay. you want to keep moving forward or you just want to stay down and that's something that it's taught me it's taught me that it's not just you know the drive of uh, sharpening your and strengthening your, your strength itself but mentally preparing you as well absolutely um, we're almost running out of time it's always a pleasure but uh, what would you like to tell the folks up there somebody that's contemplating going in there and believe me there's a lot of gyms out there teaching box aerobics and boxes and box yeah. that this is not boxing boxing is once you go inside and you actually start actually learning the science but going out there it's good gets people's spirits up but it's not what, the art. The, it's not the science itself yes. okay it's, it's it's the art that makes <coughs> boxing beautiful absolutely because of the, the technical skills that one needs to you know one needs to learn and grasp is is what makes you look beautiful up there mm -hmm. and that's what I want to thank my trainer Felix Garcia for teaching me that for leaving that mark when every time I'll step up in the ring I'll make my time worth it and I'll make the people's time being there uh, seeing me you know worthwhile and Felix has been around for a long time you know I remember Felix for a long time he's an excellent individual great trainer and um, you know that's a those clubs need to pr need to stay yes of course we can't you know and with COVID and everything going down I know people are getting sick and people are have lost some loved ones but we have to continue with these sports and continue bringing them up because they felt a lot of in good people Yes, it did. It motivated people as well too, and that's that's my that's like my second home. So yes, mm -hmm. it has to be there. <laughs> Absolutely, folks. You guys be safe. We'll be bringing out uh, Mandy hopefully later on with a baby, probably in a couple of more months. <laughs> but uh, congratulations, and folks, uh, hit the subscribe. Um, ask questions. If you guys have any questions, both of the com community and whatnot. Uh, you know, put it in there, emails, uh, buitronacademy2012 at gmail.com. Uh, if you have some story of anybody here locally that you wish to cover, we'll cover it because everybody's special, especially here in this community. Yes, definitely. Until next time, peace. Bye. <laughs> Today in America, more than 5.5 million men, women, and children train in a martial art regularly. Louis Tarun Academy has been serving Laredo for over 30 years now. Our adult classes are geared for producing the best in you, teaching you street-ready techniques. With the arts of Savat and Kinpo, you'll learn the traditions of these sciences of combat as passed down professor to student. Hello, my name is Stephen Point, and to whom this may concern. Professor Paul Bertrand is an outstanding human being and a close friend of mine. For his martial art prowess and skill is that equal to his humanity. His teaching capabilities are what one would expect of someone from his caliber. I've been in martial arts since I was nine. I'm 65 years old now. However, if I had a son or daughter who needed to learn self-defense, anti-bullying techniques, and or gain a higher level of skill in fighting, and in which I could not instruct, then Professor Paul Bertrand would be my choice. His martial understanding of his savat is higher than anyone else I have met. His pedigree is impeccable. He becomes highly recommended by myself, Guru Stephen Plank. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Richard Planis. Uh, I was the vice president of the IKKA for Ed Parker for many years, uh, tenured before he died. And I traveled, still travel the world, teaching all over. Uh, and I met lots of people uh, through the years. One of them I want to congratulate is uh, uh, Paul Butron down in Laredo, Texas. He's opening a new school, and that's always good to hear. I've known Paul uh, since he was about 18 years old. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how old he is now. We've known each other for a long time, and he's like a lot of people should be, taking the art seriously. He incorporated many arts, you know, in his school. He does, uh, you know, um, capoeira, 
silat, uh, uh, what's it, uh, jiu-jitsu, eskrima, kenpo, uh, lots of different things. You know, any art like myself that you have a sea of value in, you, you can bring it in and incorporate it if you want to. Uh, anyway, so he's opening a new school, and I'd like to recommend it to anybody who wants to train down on the radio area. Uh, meet him, go see him, you'll have fun. Thank you. Bye. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Give us a call for your free evaluation at 956 401 4868 or check out our website at savat.biz. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook. 